Hi guys, today I'm going to be doing a makeup tutorial, but first I'd like to talk about two things today. I'm going to talk about Ipsy, and I'm going to talk about this really, really cool online makeup certification class that I am taking, or course that I'm taking. Um, first, we're going to start out with Ipsy. Ipsy is the, one of the greatest organizations that I've ever used in my life. Like, They give you nail polish or face masks, makeup, hair products, stuff like that. Um, for, I believe it's $10 to get the actual Ipsy bag sent to you and then base, they just base it off of like a personal survey so if you're, you say that you have really really frizzy hair they'll give you something to help control the frizz and believe me their stuff works I have super frizzy hair and you know it, it's more controlled than it has been in the past few years um, but they basically tailor a nice little bag and they're always like adorable. I actually kind of like this one the best. This is this was this month's, and it's just so pretty. And actually, it's like a pop art kind of thing. And then like obviously, you know, it's not colored in the lines, which is, which it gives it more dimension. And it, I love the bags just because they're different each month, and they base it off of, you know, like Halloween they'll do like a Halloween themed one. Uh, Christmas they'll try to do like a fancier Christmas type one, and it's just. A really good uh, like organization not only to get makeup and to get into the makeup you know world but it's also just a fun way to express yourself like because they give you stuff that you can put on your face and you know just wear it out and it's just a really really cool thing to do just because it's like it's a, they help you express yourself through the makeup now under the makeup uh, certification course it is originally a little over two hundred dollars but they have a really 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 great discount it's $25 and you get I believe it's it's 20 hours and I believe it's 22 or 23 modules of just history of makeup makeup tips and all that stuff and it's just like a really cool thing like I've scanned through all of the modules but I'm you know re going back and reading every single part and getting some notes done and all that and I just find that like the fact that they created this online course for people who couldn't like go to an actual school to get it like a certification they just you know put all the lessons into little formats online and then that also helped with um people who like have need to work at their own pace like they take a lot more time to like can like bring things into their mind and soak it all in and it kind of helps you work at your own pace because you get a lifetime like you can go back to that at any point in time and you know you just log back in and then you can go and look and i just find that really really cool that they have helped that they're helping you know people like learn the history of makeup and then instead of just you know telling them this is what you need to do for now this is they're going this is what was in the past this is how makeup has evolved this is how makeup trends have evolved and all of that and I just think it's a really really cool thing all right jumping in I'm gonna start off I'm gonna okay what I'm gonna be doing is I'm gonna do like half my face today's trends and then the other half of my face past trends like trends that happened a few years ago like in the 1800s 1900s so I'm actually gonna start off and I'm going to put a that I'm gonna put a serum and a um, primer all over my face just so I don't get any blemishes and this is how I you know this is my little secret to how I don't have blemishes is I just pack on a really 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 good base before I put on makeup so I'm gonna go in with this uh, hey honey good morning fa uh, silk honey silk facial serum I'm just gonna apply dots all over the face and just blend that in and make sure it gets absorbed really really well into the skin so it moisturizes and soaks in and then I'm gonna go in with a primer I'm gonna use this Tarte daily or er, double duty beauty uh, base tape hydrating primer and it's like really liquidy but it's a really good primer. It um, creates a sticky surface for the foundation and concealer to stick to, 
but it's not too sticky. And it also goes on very, very thin, but it does a lot of, like, it, um, the pore minimizer also. So it gets rid of the look of pores after you've set your foundation and all that. Alright, now I'm going to go in with foundation. And I'm going to use this uh, Romeo London Lasting 25 Hour Breathable Foundation. And I'm going to apply this all over the face too, even though in past times they would have gone with a light foundation on a further, um, like, for the trends past, because when, when they, uh, when in the past they wanted, like, lighter skin, I don't have a lighter foundation. I only have one that's my skin tone and then, like, a shade or two darker, which, I mean, I guess I could have done my skin tone on one, because I'm pretty white, and then done, um, the one a shade or two darker on the other side, but, mm. I'm just going to blend this in, and there are going to be some trends where I can't do, because I either, you know, don't have, like, the thin eyebrows, I'm not, I'm not shaving off my eyebrow, because that's what they did. They shaved off their eyebrows, and they tweezed them to get them small, uh, like, thinner, and uh, the reason why they did that was because they wanted to look smarter. And I guess that kind of doesn't make sense. Um, I'm assuming because it gave you a bigger forehead, which made it seem like your brain was bigger. Uh, I don't know. It was weird. Now I'm going to go in with some concealer, and I'm going to use this Be Bright, Bright Illuminating Concealer. And I'm going to apply, a, I'm going to just apply like the generous amount that people do nowadays. everywhere on this side and on the other side they like doing a light concealer just to hide blemishes and all of that and put a little bit on the tip of my nose and then I'm gonna go ahead and blend this out Okay, now for contour. See, the trend nowadays is to have a really, really dark contour. So that is what I'm going to do for that for this side, uh, if I can find the right. Alright, I'm going to take this nice contour palette. It's also a concealer palette, but I only use the contour. And I'm going to use a little bit of this dark one and a little bit of this light, just to, because the light is too light, that one is too dark. And I'm just going to carve out where I would normally place the contour. So that means like the cheekbone, the forehead. And jawline. the nose and on the other side I'm not going to apply the cream contour because they didn't really contour back then. I'm just going to blend out that contour. And then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to set all of this in place with this Airspin Loose Face Setting Powder and the shade Honey Beige. And I'm going to apply this all over the face just to set, um, 
just set everything in place. Normally on the other side I probably would have used a translucent powder just so it stayed m more of a light uh, color but I don't have any translucent powder on me once again but they would normally use a uh, they would actually use lead based makeup back then too uh, which is actually very dangerous. It could cause. They ended up changing the, like the products that were in the makeup because it was the lead and copper were causing muscle paralysis and death. And there was one other thing. It was. I don't remember the other thing right now. That sucks. I'll look up. I'll look it up real fast while I'm setting this. I wrote it down green. Um, muscle paralysis, tremors, and death is what the lead and stuff caused. That's what it was. So now I'm gonna go in with some hot with some bronzer, and they didn't really bronze back then either. But I'm gonna do just a light bronzing on the cheekbones, just to give it give my face a little more definition. But I'm going to go like a normal, you know, heavy kind of amount on the other side. And some of the trends that like have changed over time, you know, people want to be tan instead of like pale. People want to be... Like, the makeup, they want their makeup to be more, like, cake. I mean, like, I do the cakey makeup sometimes, too, but most of the time, if I'm wearing makeup, it's something more, like, casual, unless I'm going to, like, a really big event, like a party or something like that, then I'll, like, cake on the makeup because I don't want it to wear off through the night. But if, like, I'm wearing it to school, it's more of a light thing just because they don't really do much at school when I'm only there for eight hours. Um, now I'm going to go in, if I can find my my thing, with a teardrop shaped beauty blender and that same airspin loose fading face setting powder and I'm going to just bake this half of my face. And the reason why I'm not doing it to the other face, or this other side of the face, is because back in ancient times they didn't know what baking was. And they didn't wear, they didn't cake on the makeup to where it might be like you need to set it more they kind of just dabbed a little bit of foundation on just to hide blemishes and all that and mostly that was it okay had to turn off the light While we're waiting for that to finish setting, we can go ahead and do eyebrows and eyes. And I'm going to do the eyebrows first. So this side, of course, I'm going to have the natural arch, thicker eyebrow. And on this side, I would have had more of a thin eyebrow. So I'm going to go a little dramatic on this eyebrow and a little less dramatic on this one. Just so you can see somewhat of a difference. But like I said, I am not going to shave off my eyebrow. And some people do that, like, even nowadays, they'll, like, shave off the tail of their eyebrow so they can get the, the arch of their eyebrow where they want it and they can, you know, give more uh, room on their eyelids. I personally like the way my eyebrows are shaped and I like how much eyelid room I have for eyeshadows and stuff. So I'm, I don't really shave off my eyebrows. And I'll tell you now, a trend that was like in the night, like the late 1900s, early 2000s, was block eyebrows. So they would like block out the whole eyebrow. I'm not gonna actually do that. Um, and then they'd fill it all in one solid color. Well, if you look at the natural eyebrow, right up here is more sparse and uh, lighter than the rest of the eyebrow, only because there's less 
eyebrow hair there. So, the other side, I'm just gonna. And then for brow gel, I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to put on that um, Ulta Beauty Clear Brow Gel. And for the eyebrow pencil, I use the It Cosmetics Universal Brow Pencil in the shade Taupe. Probably should have mentioned that. Pretty much the same, you know, brow pencil I've been using my whole life. For, well, not my whole life, but I mean like recently. Okay, now I'm going to go in and I'm actually going to use some of that uh, hydrating primer for a base on this eyelid. There's not going to be a base on the other eyelid just because that wasn't like a trend that was happening back then. Like normally I would use like a concealer for a primer but this just seemed more like this doesn't seem as sticky as concealer would be so it would be easier to blend out colors. Now I'm going to go in with this LA Colors um, adorable palette in the like it's a neutral sh uh, palette and I'm gonna get a few of my fluffy brushes here and we're going to we're gonna do we're gonna work with this all right now I'm gonna go in with this really dense brush and we'll pick up this this medium brown right here I'm going to place that right on, in the crease just to start off with the defining of the crease. And one of the trends that's like popular today is, like there's a few trends, there's dark lipstick, um, natural look, there's a pop art look where you just go crazy with color, um, there's a chocolate eye which is what I'm doing, so it's like browns, like really dark browns, um, smoky eye which I've done in the past many many times because that's like my favorite thing to do, um, there's, you know, just some really cool um, what else is there? Like, I have a whole list. There's winged eyeliner, dark lipstick, chocolate eyeshadow, pop art, and then smoky eye and natural look. So, those are pretty much all of the things. And I'm going to go in with this lighter brown. And I'm going to blend that off, like, on the top just to make it a less of a harsh line. And I'm using a bigger fluffy brush. And I'm just going to blend that out until I have the desired blending that I want. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a flat brush and I'm going to pick up this brown shade right here and I'm going to pack that on the lid really, really well. And I'm also going to go in with a little bit of this color right here, this like shimmery brown and put that on too because there's usually shimmery browns. And then for the lower lash line, I'm going to go in with this really dark brown that I used in the crease. And I'm going to use that same brush that I used for the applying the flat. And I'm just going to line that waterline. Oh, I did not use this one in the crease. This is the one I was... I used that one. That one in the crease. That's alright. I'm going to use this really dark one and I'm going to line. On, I'm going to smoke it out underneath. Alright, now for this side, I'm going to use the um, LA Colors Eye Adorable Palette but in the black. And I'm going to use a dense brush and I'm going to pick up this medium gray. Because back then the trend was gray and lemon color. So gray and yellow. And again, no primer and I'm just going to pack that on into the crease. And because I'm gonna, I'm gonna assume that um, they didn't blend as well as we did here, 
with adding the lighter color on top because like I don't know I guess they blended but they didn't blend very well like it was probably a little blotchy and then I'm gonna go ahead and just take that same brush I'm gonna pick up this gray color right here and mix it a little bit with that color and I'm just gonna pack that on the lid I'm gonna blend that art. Right. And I'm not gonna put any on the lower lash line just because I don't really. They, they wanted their makeup to be more of a subtle thing. I mean, gray isn't that subtle, but I mean, the yellow would be. I just don't have yellow. Uh, now I'm gonna go in with mascara, and both of them use mascara, but this side will only have mascara on the top lashes and this one will have it on both so i'm going to use the um revlon bold lacquer um mascara and in, in black and i'm just going to apply like normal Okay. Now I'm going to do winged eye or eyeliner and on this side it's going to be a wing, on this side I'm just going to do what's called a bar line and it's just going to be right along that lash line. So I'm going to go ahead and do that one first just because that one is a little easier to do. And I kind of like doing this just because both eyes don't have to be the same in this one. So I don't have to really worry about like making this wing the same length as the other wing. And doing this gives the look of thicker eyelashes, which is what people back then wanted. I have to hold my arm like this or it's going to start like twitching. And on this one, just a normal wing. And the wing, okay, the wing will elongate the eyes as well as give the look of a thicker lash line. And then I'm going to do like the inner corner wing. Which will also elongate the eyes. And that's the first time I've done that really, really well. So I'm actually kind of proud. Alright, now I'm going to wipe away all of the bake from the side and you can already tell the difference from this side is like more bronzed and glam and this side is just kind of the not my cup of tea because I don't like having you know gray but I'm gonna go in with this cargo blush in the shade Bali and I'm gonna hack a little bit on my cheeks up to my temple and I'm going to do the same, but mostly pack it on my cheeks. Because in, in the olden days, in the ancient times, they wanted more of a pale look. So they put more blush on their cheeks to give their cheeks more of a rosy, so they look paler. Now I'm going to go in with highlighter. And they didn't really use this in the old days, so I'm, I'm not going to really put any on there. On that, this side, I'm going to put mainly on this side. 
I'm going to go in with this nice fan brush and apply a generous amount to my cheekbones and my forehead, my chin, my nose. And on this side, I'm just going to dab a little bit on, just to give, again, some dimension of, you know, having high points and low points on the face. Now, I'm actually going to go back in with that brow pencil, and I'm not going to do anything with the brows. I'm actually just going to use it, and I'm going to add, like, little fake freckles, because everyone nowadays wants freckles. So I'm just going to add a little bit. And then you go in with your finger and you just blend them in a little bit and they look more natural. Alright, now it's time for lips. In the old times, I just wanted to do like a little bit of a stain. So, I'm going to use this Stilla liquid lipstick in the shade Perla. And blend that out on half of my lips. Then I'm going to go in, and I have no idea where this is from. Because the labels will come off, because I've used it so many times. And we like to do ombre, so I will be using that Stella lipstick again. And I'm going to be using a flat brush. To blend this out. And these are just some of like today's trends that are on this side of my face. I'm going to cover up this side so I don't get confused. So the wing liner is a really big trend happening. The dark lipstick, mainly the liquid matte lipsticks are like a big thing. The, the thicker eyebrows is a really good thing, like a higher arch. It's a really big thing happening nowadays so you have more eyelid room. And people for some reason love freckles so they find a way to put fake freckles on. So I did that with the um, eyebrow pencil. The contour is very, very, you know, sharp on this side. And on this side, I didn't really put very much. I just put a very, very light dusting of that on my cheekbones. Just to give definition to this face. Highlighter, very, very, you know, vibrant there. You noticeable. Um, here, you don't really have much. You just have a little to, you know bring more again definition the eye shadow on the other hand the chocolate eye shadow here is more of a trend happening nowadays just because of the brown shades it looks more nat like more natural but it also brings more a focus to the eyes along with that cat eye on this side it's just gray and normally they'd have like a yellow but i didn't i couldn't find my yellow eyeshadow so more of a gray um, on this side it's on the upper and lower up of the eyelid and on the lower lash line this one is just on the uh, eyelid uh, mascara top and bottom lashes on this side and on this side just on the top just to give more of a curl and to open the eye just a little bit this one seems more open uh, the inner and outer wing to elongate the eye this one has a bar just to thicken the eyelashes and this one has the wing and the bar to thicken the eyelashes as well 
and that, is, that was a lot of stuff that I listed off. And this is the end of the look. Bye.